Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK as part of IBM Europe. This movie is about workload partitions, or WPAR for short, and application mobility, where we move these WPARs between machines. This is all part of AIX6. In this movie, we're going to create a workload partition using the Workload Partition Manager in the quickest way for the administrator. All we have to do is supply the workload partition name, its network details, and its NFS details and we can start the creation. We can create a new workload partition by logging into AIX and on the command line inputting a fairly long complicated command that's fairly easy to do with a script. Or we can use the workload manager to create a new workload partition in two ways. First of all up here we have a guided activity so if we clicked here we'd go through a series of panels and we could input all the details clearly to find everything that we want about a workload partition. There's also a shortcut way of doing that and we can do that by clicking here on this new workload partition button. And this is a very simple cut down, get you going fast and we can put in the other details by editing the details of the workload partition and we'll look at that later. So let's uh, quickly create a new workload partition. First of all we need a name for this workload partition and by default I use the same name and host name for the workload partition. They don't have to be the same, but if we do that then it makes life uh, simpler. Then we have to decide which system we actually want to put it on. And if we type in the first couple of characters of a host name, it will give us the list of matching ones so we can select one. Here we can select a system or an application workload partition. If we click on application, of course, the application we have to actually tell it which is the application we actually want to run. So this is the command line to start it up. But let's create a system uh, workload partition. We can opt to have uh, private file systems for user and opt. Uh, let's not do that to keep it nice and simple. And whether we want it mobile or not. If we say it's not mobile, as we have it here, that means that the file systems are created on the global AIX and then we can't move it because the actual disk space is with that copy of AIX. Alternatively, if we click mobile, then we're going to have to have those file systems mounted via NFS, and we have to put in the details here. So let me quickly do that now. And we need a directory in which to uh, mount. I've previously uh, already created these and it will, as soon as I click OK, actually go and start using these to create the workload partition. Again, you can see here it goes into the transitional state and we can click on task activities here and we can look at what's going on. Okay, I had one here that uh, failed just a minute ago. I typed in the uh, wrong mount point, but here's our one in uh, progress and we can see that it's uh, still running there boot hasn't exist and it's now doing the deploy and it's uh, in progress so it's actually doing the uh, install phase this will actually take a few minutes uh, like uh, three or four minutes so uh, I'll probably cut out those uh, minutes in the movie and uh, come back to you in a second. Okay then, it just finished. It's finished successfully. And we can see here's the actual command that it built for us when we actually uh, typed in those few buttons here. We can see the uh, NFS mount points in here, and we can see the, um, the name here of the workload partition, and we can see in here the host name of the partition. Output, we can see the details of what it actually did, installing all the file sets and things, and errors, nothing at all. So we come out of that, we can then see the other things that it did as part of that uh, operation. And it did, it get the properties, successful and retrieve the partition state. Okay. 
If we go then back to our list of partitions, we should find our new partition. Here we go. WP13, it's in the defined state. It is uh, mobile and this is the machine that it's actually running on, or would be if we started up. So let's do that now. To confirm we want it started, just in case we hit the wrong button. And there it is. We now have this uh, running. OK, we have a fully functional workload partition here. You might be asking yourself, what does it look like if it actually fails? So let me go back to my previous one that failed, and we have a look at that. Here we find there are three parts for that uh, failure. It did some pre-checking here. Does it exist before it tries to create it? It tried to create it and failed, then it cleaned up afterwards. So let's have a look at the details of this failure. We'll just click on that item there. So here we have the command, the output, and the error for this. The command is much the same as the one that worked, except you might notice in here that the mount point for the NFS directory is slightly different and unfortunately wrong. Otherwise, I think this command is exactly the same. If we look at the output, we'll find that the make wpar command was trying to create the file system. So it was trying to create the first one, the root file system, and didn't get any further. If we look at the error here, we'll see this looks exactly like the a failure we get out of the mount command if we're trying to do an NFS mount, because that's exactly what it was doing. The problem we have is right here, we are missing a slash and a WP. So it's reporting that it can't mount the file system, and so can't proceed any further. And this gave me the clue of the mistake that I typed in. In the next movie, we're going to look at how to create a workload partition and setting all the details.